In this video, I wanted to talk about uh, a feature that, for some reason, uh, doesn't get a lot of coverage. It's not covered in the book. Um, it's called an opacity mask, and there's a good reason why you might use it. So let me just draw out an example for you. Uh, if I pick a color here on this object, and then we go ahead and build a, another object on top of it, and let's have this one be colored a little different. Um, you know, there's a couple of kinds of transparencies I can use. I, I can apply just the basic transparency to this, and the transparency is affected across the entire object. Okay, um, then starting with CS4 and above, what was neat is that you could also, um, instead of having transparency take place across the entire object, you could apply transparency in blend steps. So if I apply a, a gradient to this and I click, I, I'm sorry, not blend steps, on gradient steps. If I click on a particular part of the gradient, so the color white in this case, notice that there's an opacity amount that I can enter and I can put in transparency and that affects just this step. If I copy another step over, let's uh, let's make a copy of this guy and maybe change it to a different color so we can see the effect. Notice that in this middle step it's still 100% opaque. Um, or we could make this even more interesting if I slide this one down so it's now transparent and for this one on the far left, slide it back up, now you can see it's opaque on either end and transparent in the middle. Okay, but what happens if you wanted transparency that was a little more uh, organic? Maybe uh, you wanted transparency that moved across part of an object in a nonlinear way or a non-radial way. You wanted a blend maybe to um, dictate the transparency of the object or a gradient mesh to do this. Well, you can do that as well. So. Um, I wouldn't ask the question if you couldn't do it right. So here I'm just drawing out this this object and uh, let's just give it a, a flat color for now. Oh, I didn't mean to do just the gradient. Let's go ahead and apply just a flat color. There we go. Alright, so I have just this flat color object and I'll set it on top so we can kind of see what's happening. And then just for argument's sake, what I'm going to do is I'm, I'm going to make uh, a, a different object on top. Gradient, um, I'm sorry, opacity masks work by having the top item mask out the item underneath. Whatever's white on top or, or light on top is opaque. Whatever's dark on top or black is transparent on the object below. So a lot of times the first thing that people misunderstand about um, opacity masks are how um, how the top object interacts with the bottom object. So I'm going to just draw out another object and I'm going to color it um, black just so that we can see how this how this is different because um, I just want to make that point. And then I'm going to get out um, the gradient mesh tool. I'm going to just add a couple of mesh points in here. And let's just color these things a little differently. So I'll make one white. Let's make one here somewhat in the middle, kind of a gray tone. Make this one near white. Over on the side here we could do something in the middle. And we'll leave this kind of a darker gray color. Now to make an opacity mask what you do is you select the top object. Again, the top object's just this gradient mesh. And the object that you're gonna um, apply the mask to. So I'm just selecting both. And sometimes it works better to do this in outline mode, but we can see what we're doing here. And then the odd thing about it, you would think you would have an opacity mask down in the object menu somewhere. But for whatever reason, um, they, they don't have they don't have it there. It's in the transparency palette. I'm going to pop this open 
and in the options for transparency I can choose make opacity mask. Now when I do that what happens is the top object disappears and what was ever white in the top object we have full opacity in the bottom object and you can kind of see here the the comparison whatever was black in the top object is now transparent in the bottom object. So an opacity mask, I, I think the exercise asks you to make some clouds using an opacity mask. An opacity mask provides you a much more subtle kind of transparency than the two types of transparency I described, either, either transparency across the whole object or transparency just in linear steps or radial steps in the object. So again, we could make a fluffy cloud. Um, why don't I just draw out a cloud here? I'm holding down Option so I can close this path. That was a great tip that somebody found about closing up pencil lines. Um, we'll just color this a flat color, a, a fluffy cloud color. Um, there we go, and I'll get rid of the, uh, the stroke. Now to make this fluffy cloud actually fluffy, I'm going to copy it, paste it directly on top of itself, so Command um, F or Control F if you're on the PC. And this front object, I'm going to first set its uh, fill to black, there we go. And then I'm going to scale it down a little bit change its pivot point just a little here. And for this interior one, I'm going to give it a fill that's closer to white. Now notice that it works with any color. I just like to think about black and white um, because it helps me think in terms of what's going to be opaque, what's going to be transparent. So if we look at this, the right at the edge here is going to be transparent and in the middle area it's going to be near opaque. I'm going to make a blend out of this, so I'm going to just select both shapes. Object, Blend, Make. Get that nice little continuous blend here. Now I'm going to select the blend and that shape behind it, so I'm going to just drag a marquee over the whole thing. And it's important to understand, again, this is different than the shape that I'm actually making the I'm not affecting the opacity mask on. The object on top is this complex blend object and behind it is a cloud shape that's the same. Now I could do this with a completely different shape just like I did here. Okay, so I'm making sure that they're all selected. Open up transparency. Make opacity mask. Now my cloud, you can't really tell here what's happening, but if I drag it over something now you can see that cloud has a fluffy vector edge to it based off of the shape below it, or I'm sorry, the shape above it. By the way, if you ever want to edit a mask, you just click on it in the transparency palette. And now I can come in and I can affect part of the blend. Maybe I want it to be whiter. So I could choose a, a lighter color and you'll notice that affects it. If I click on the outer part of the blend, Maybe I want this actually to be a little lighter so that it's more opaque. So we'll just come in and adjust its color a little bit so it's just a little wider. And by doing that, I'm affecting its transparency. When you're done, by the way, when you're editing an opacity mask, if you look in the layer palette, all you'll see is opacity mask. You'll just see the blend item, and that's all you can work with. The minute you flip back to editing the original shape, then your layer palette goes back to just being normal. So that's an opacity mask. There's cool things you can do. Uh, note that I can reverse, I can invert the mask. So now it's light around the edges and transparent in the middle. So every cloud has its silver lining. There you go. You could make something like that. So opacity masks are very cool. Oh, and the clip thing, this acts like a clipping mask. So if you have an object that's larger than the masking item, then it's going to clip at the masking item's edge if you wanted to do that. 
Um, very powerful. You can do uh, you can do this with other objects too. I'm going to lay in some text. I should really get some lorem ipsum text, but I'm being lazy. All right. And make this text a little bit smaller. Let's make it nine point. And I'm going to adjust the letting on it so that it's nice and tight as well. And let's copy it and paste it just a little more. I'm going to change the... Oh, that doesn't look any good at all. Let's bring this in a little bit. Okay, now we've got a little bit of a text drag. Of course you would bring in real text instead of this. But I have text here. Now I'm going to place a graphic. Let's see if I can go out. Do I have any pictures? Um, you know what? I wonder if I'm missing a picture. Um, let's generate a picture real quick. So, in Photoshop, ooh, that's huge, I don't want that, um, 7 by 10, okay. Oh, did I do 7 by 10 pixels? I think I did. Sorry. Let's set this over to inches. Let's have this be 7, 10 tall, okay. Let's see if there's, just want to generate some quick texture. That render clouds thing in Photoshop is a fun way to, to work. So I'll save this. This, you know, we could do all kinds of interesting things here. Um, but but this will be good. This is what we need. So I'll just save this out to the desktop. Come back into Illustrator. We'll place that. Let's see, it's untitled. Oh, and I wanted to show you one other thing while we're placing. Um, we're going to link to this file, and I'm going to show you a reason why linking is cool in this case. All right, so we place it in. It's quite a bit bigger. We'll scale it down here so it's a little closer in size. Okay, and again, same idea. We're going to place this on top, select both the text and the clouds, make an opacity mask, and now my text has the cloud transparency in it, which is really cool. Now I can slide this over, and you can actually see the clouds passing through the type. Um, there's been all kinds of interesting little advertisements in the past that use this little gimmick and, and it was hard to do photographically but with Illustrator it, it's easy. Um, now I wanted to show you why why linking. Well if I go back to Photoshop and do some contrast on this so let's really pump up the contrast here so now I've really increased where we're going to have transparency in the black areas and opacity in the white areas. Save it. Come back to Illustrator and you get this nice little message. This isn't always a bad message. Hey, the files are missing or modified. We know the file is modified. You want to update the link? Yeah. And when we do, notice it increases our transparency settings for our type. So that's a really cool um, way to kind of work between Illustrator and Photoshop. 
So opacity masks, they're very powerful. I don't think they're very well understood. You can do all kinds of neat things with them. Um, in, again, in the exercise, it asks for you to make some clouds like this, but experiment. Gradient meshes, that's a good use for them. And experiment taking some photos and bringing those into Illustrator. You still have this vector edge, you know, um, but then where the transparency is determined, it's determined at a pixel level. So obviously, it's, it's kind of a mixing between vector and transparent, or I'm sorry, vector and raster. Um, information. So there you have it. Uh, please let me know if you have questions.